Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today we'll be building an ADF radio. For this build, you'll need these 3D printed parts, this laser cut piece of acrylic, this circuit board you can find on my Patreon or website, M3 screws and hardware, window tint, these clock style seven segment displays, these capacitors and resistors, six red LEDs, a max 7219 through hole chip, pin headers, a single and dual rotary encoder, and a 30 pin IDC connector. Um, male and then the female cable to connect it to the breakout board. You can also just wire these directly to the Arduino if you prefer. Let's start out our build with the circuit board. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is add on the resistors. This right here is the 40 kilo ohm resistor. Uh, the rest are 150 ohms and you can just put this one in here. I'm using 47 kilo ohms because that's what I have on hand. It's important to do these two LEDs and then this Max 7219 board. Once you're done with the board, you can move on to the buttons. There's a little plus icon and that is where the long end of the LED in the button goes. Now you can install the seven segment displays where the lettering is on the bottom. You can now solder the back of the buttons and the seven segment displays, just making sure they have good connection. Place the single and dual encoder and then solder the back so that they're all soldered on. Finally, you can solder the IDC 30 pin connector as well as any capacitors. The ceramic capacitor is the flatter one while the electrolytic capacitor is the round one. The long end goes into the plus and the negative end faces away from the plus. Also add the pin headers if you want to add backlighting to the buttons. Now we're done with this circuit board and let's move on to the faceplate. This is 3D printed and if you only have a one color printer, you can just print it out in black and then use a paint pen for the white text. We're going to add these heat set inserts into these four corners. Cool state park, by the way. And by four, of course, I mean five. This is clear acrylic that I spray painted black and then laser engraved lettering through. Let's make the surface a lot prettier by putting on this window film. Press it down. You can hold it down so that it gets nice and stuck to the face. Then grab a utility knife and score around the edges. All right, that looks a lot better. Make sure that the text is the correct way up and you can uh, place it onto here. Now you can either super glue this as it is and use these, this notch as kind of an alignment, or you can do what I do and you slide the back plate in and make sure it's all the way down and then push this front panel in. If you don't have a snap fit, you can add some super glue in here. And if you shine a light through the back of it, you'll notice that you can illuminate these words. Woohoo! Finally, we can put these letters on ADF, BFO, FRQ, slash arrow, flight, slash ET, and set or reset. Next, grab the circuit board, place it through here, and snap it all together if it requires snapping. Before tightening down these screws, or during, as I'm doing, uh, make sure to use these side snips and snip off the ends of the encoders. And of course, now we can just put the buttons on. Now, if you want to backlight it internally through the breakout board Arduino, you can push together where it says in, just bridge those two using this DC shunt, so it's the right position on this backlight header right here. And for the wiring, we can plug it into the IDC breakout system. I did a video on this just barely, but you can plug in the wire right here, plug in the other wire right here, the other end of it. And you're off. Now you can open up this KR87 file. You can find it in the Cessna 172 project 
under ADF KR87 Moby Flight, KR87.mcc, and let's upload the Moby Flight Arduino right here. Sweet. Let's open up the MFMC right here. You can find this in the Cessna 172 project files. Upload the config. Go over to general to enable logging, just so we can check that all the buttons are working. Click OK. And now if we click ADF, it says no config found, but it is pressing. BFO, FRQ, FLT, etc. Now if we go to Extras, Manage Orphan Serials, we can cl click our ADF right here, drop down and assign it to our ADF, click Assign. Now if we click Run, everything is happening like it should, except for, of course, the sim isn't up and running. We have our ADF right here and we can switch between ADF and antenna. We can enable and disable BFO, we can switch frequencies. We can switch between flight and elapsed time. And we can also, when we're in elapsed time, set our little timer. You can also pause it and reset it. It just counts up, kind of handy. We also have our volume knob, which you can press to power the unit down if you want to enable that functionality. And you also have your frequency. So you can have your ones place, push it down and rotate to have your tens place or have your hundreds place right here. I'm north of an airport with a frequency of 400 kilohertz. I just found that online. And now let's tune to 400. Four Switch frequency. And we'll see right there, it activated. And I can fly towards the NDB using my extremely safe flying skills. And use that for navigation. Pretty sweet. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you to Alexandre, Bala, Ben, Chris, Christopher, David, ECD Crew, Herman, Joseph, Juan Fortes, Marcelo, Morgan, Pierre, Pim, Scott, and Tuna Power for supporting these videos on Patreon. I'm really excited to get working on the next project, and I hope you'll stay tuned, do all the subscription thingies, and have an absolutely fantabulous rest of your day. Stay spicy!